Let's say that you're the founder of this treasure map. It's around where you live, so you decide you're going to go looking for this treasure. You look at the map, and you get a compass out, and the compass, the compass is pointing this way, and you figure you're on your way to finding this treasure, and then it gets a little dark, starting to get a little dark, so you flip on the lamp that's beside your treasure map, and when you do that, all of a sudden the treasure map, or the, sorry, the uh, compass needle starts pointing in a different direction. The compass needle points this way. And you're like, what, what's going on? You flip off the light, because that's what seemed to, happen, seemed to change it, right? You flip off the light, and the compass needle goes back to pointing in the direction that it was pointing. So it's pointing this way, and then when you flip on the light, it's pointing this way, and then when you flip off the light, it's pointing back to the way that it was pointing again before, and so on and so on and so on. It seems like the presence of the light causes the direction of the compass needle to switch directions. But then somebody else does the same thing and they find that the, the light isn't affecting the compass needle. They switch, switch on their light or the flashlight over there and it's not causing the compass needle to change directions. So you realize at that point that the cord that runs from the plug-in to your lamp runs underneath your map, in fact, directly underneath this compass. So you conclude, the only logical conclusion that you can make is that the presence or absence of an electric current flowing through the wire that goes to the light is what's causing the compass needle to point into one direction or another. This is essentially what Orsted did, Hans Christian Orsted, almost 200 years ago, in 1819, by accident discovered that an electric current, or we could simply just say moving charges, because that's what an electric current is, just moving electric charges, generate a magnetic field. This is probably the most important, I wouldn't say the most important scientific discovery, but probably the most important technological discovery. You guys know the difference between technology and science? Like technology is the application, right? This is probably the most important technological discovery in the history of the world, literally. That electric current or moving electric charges generate magnetic fields. It may not seem like it. Like, what, what's the big deal, right? Well, everything we have now, like, some of you guys are, I see you guys have your calculators on the side of your desk. If we didn't have, we didn't discover this 200 years ago, our calculators wouldn't work, okay? Um, somebody taking notes on their computer. Well, we wouldn't have computers if, if we didn't discover that electric current generates magnetic fields. You wouldn't be able to use your phones, okay, if we didn't discover that electric currents generate magnetic fields. Just about everything we do technologically today is based, at least in part, on this principle that electric current generates magnetic fields. But in order to use this, it's not good enough to just know that it happens. We need to know exactly what that magnetic field looks like. Well, it's circular. In fact, the magnetic field surrounding the moving charges are a series of concentric circles. Do you know what that word means, concentric? Here's a circle, here's another circle, here's another circle. Those are concentric circles, one circle around another. The magnetic field surrounding a moving electric charge or electric current is a series of concentric circles. We can find the direction of that magnetic field, because it is a vector field, just like the magnetic field surrounding a bar magnet. We can find the direction by using a rule that we call the wire grasp rule. Now, you go off to university and you learn about this stuff, you're going to learn basically the same stuff, but the rule might be called something different. This isn't any kind of official name for the rule. Okay, what we do is, has to be consistent from physics 30 to second year university, but the name of the rule isn't necessarily going to be the same. 
We call it the wire grasp. But what's important, what's more important than the name of it, though, is what we actually do to figure out the direction of the magnetic field. Here's what we do. I want everybody to do this right now, actually. Drop your pens. Hey, drop your pens. You've got to get ready because you're going to have to do a little rule with, with your hands here. So here's what I want you to do, okay? Everybody take your hands. Okay, put them both up like this. Okay, get them ready. Get them limber, flexible, okay? Put your left hand in. Put your left hand out. Put your left hand in. Now shake it all about. Okay, is it ready? Okay. Do the, no, we won't do the, we won't do the next part. Um, so here's what you have to do to figure out the direction of the magnetic field that is really just a series of concentric circles surrounding moving charges or electric currents. Okay, you're going to take your thumb. Your, you put your fingers in your thumb, by the way, first at, at 90 degrees to each other like this. Okay, just like this. So you're like, stop like this, right? 90 degree thumb and fingers like this. Put your thumb in the direction of the moving charge. Or you could say the direction of the electric current, because really that's what it is, right? Moving charges or electric current. So you're going to stick your thumb in the direction of the electric current or whatever direction the charges are moving. So if the charge is moving this way, stick your thumb this way. If your charge is moving up towards the ceiling, then stick your thumb up towards the ceiling. If, if the charge is moving towards the floor, stick your thumb down towards the floor. And then you're going to bend your fingers. It doesn't matter how much you bend them. Okay, some people might bend them like this just a little bit. Some people might bend them like this a lot. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that your fingers and your thumb are kept at 90 degrees. Don't all of a sudden do this. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, thumb, fingers, 90 degrees, and then bend your fingers. Okay, see what I'm doing there? Bend your fingers a little bit. Your bent fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field caused by the moving charge or caused by the electric current because that's all a moving charge is, right? Now, if I just, if this is like saying, like if I just give you this rule and say, okay, go ahead and do it, this is like saying, this is like Mr. Ayala was saying, this is how you shoot a free throw, go ahead and do it. Okay. I got to show you how to do it and you got to practice how to do it in order for you to actually be able to really do it, right? So let's do a couple of examples here. All right, we got our three examples here. The first one, number one, shows an electron that is moving. This X represents, which way is it going? Away from us, into the page. So an electron is moving into the page. We know that the magnetic field surrounding that is a series of concentric circles. Notice these circles, by the way, are getting further and further apart, indicating that the strength of the magnetic field is getting weaker, which makes sense, right? The further away from what's causing it, the weaker the field's going to be. Figure out the direction of the field now. Okay, everybody do this. Everybody do this. Take your left hand. Remember, thumb and fingers perpendicular to each other. Okay, stick your left thumb into the page. Now, for you, into your page would be down like this, right? Into my page, it's like this. You can do it whichever way you want. And then bend your fingers a little bit. Okay, when I do that, it looks like my magnetic field points this way. But what if you, what if you did it like this? Well, now my fingers are pointing this way. Well, what if I had my fingers like this? Or what if I crunched them further and they're like this? Does it really matter? The magnetic field goes counterclockwise regardless of where you put them or regardless of how much you clench them. Does that make sense? Yeah? What if you use your right hand? Well, you could use your right hand if you have a positive particle. But if you have a negative particle like an electron, you're always going to want to use your left hand. An alpha particle, proton, something like that, you're always going to want to use your right hand. Okay? Okay, let's take a look at the second one here. Now, for the second one, just because we're running out of space here, I'll just draw one circle. But remember, there are multiple circles, right, with the magnetic field pointing in the same direction. We'll just draw the one here, though, because we're kind of out of space there. 
This one shows an electron coming which way? Towards you, out of the page. We're going to say thumb in the direction of the particle, which is this way. Fingers, thumb, still 90 degrees to each other, right? Doesn't matter if, even if I bend them, still 90 degrees. Thumb this way, fingers are going to point which way? Doesn't matter where I put them or how much I bend them, my fingers are pointing clockwise. So we'll say this one is counterclockwise, we'll say this one is clockwise. Here we've got, Jack, you said what about the right hand? Let's make this an alpha particle. Okay, so it's positively charged. By the way, what does that 2 plus mean? It's positively charged, specifically it's 2 times the elementary charge. Yeah, good. Um, this one you can use your right hand. How do, you figure, how do you figure out the direction of the magnetic field this time? It's kind of like this. Like, you can't say clockwise or counterclockwise, right? Let's say, let's say, look, look at my fingers right now. My thumb is pointing in the direction of the moving alpha particle. Where are my fingers right now? My fingertips, okay, my fingernails, the ends of my fingers. Not which way are they pointing, just where are they right now? Above the wire, which way are they pointing? Right. So I'm going to say that the magnetic field above the wire is into the page. Here I'm using x to represent still into the page, but the x here represented the, the particle moving into the page. Here the x represents the magnetic field pointing into the page. Okay, so sometimes it's helpful to actually have like a pen or something as a little manipulative here. Here's my wire with my, cr or my, um, my, my current or my alpha particle is going to the, to the left. Okay, I'll stick my thumb in the direction of the, the particles. Where are my fingers right now? Where are my fingers? Not which way are they pointing? Where are my fingertips? Below. Below. Which way are they pointing? Out. Out of the page. So we're going to say below it, it's represented by a dot. Out of the page. Where are my fingertips right now? Nope. Where are they right now? In front of the wire. Good. Or not in front of the wire, but in front of the moving alpha particle. Which way are they pointing, Kyle? Up. So we're going to say in front, the magnetic field is pointing up. Sometimes you've got to move your body around. This is one of the most entertaining for things for me in all of Physics 30, actually, is people are doing this, and then they want to say, like, okay, I want my fingers to be behind the wire now, and then they start contorting their... It's, it's like Cirque du Soleil, like as people are moving around to try to get their hands around the other side. Really, all you have to do is this. Like, turn around a little bit. Where are my fingers, fingertips right now? Behind the wire, and which way are they pointing? Down. Now, notice the symbol I'm using here. Do you see that this one means in front of the wire? This one means behind? I don't really care if you use those symbols or you just say, use the words up, down, and so on, as long as, or, or even draw like a circular thing around it if you're artistic, as long as you can show the direction of the magnetic field somehow. <laughs> Does that make sense? So, two things. Okay, fundamentally, left hand, left hand negative particle, right hand positive particle. And once you decide which hand you're using, you got to say thumb 90 degrees to the fingers, thumb in the direction of the moving charge, and fingers in the direction, bent fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you'll always, you'll always be told whether it's a positive or a negative particle. I will say, um, sometimes you see a word, a term called electron current which of course means the movement of the electrons. Sometimes you see a term called conventional current. Conventional current is the flow of positive. So like if I had alpha particles moving, conventional current. Okay? So I want to say conventional current, positive charge. Remember, if you see that word conventional current or that term conventional current, just use your right hand rule for that. All right, I'm going to have you guys look at worksheet number 10 right now. It's only five questions, and there's no math to it. It should go fairly quickly for you, I think. Um, 
but sit down, try to do each one of them, and uh, let me know uh, as I'm walking around if you have any questions with any of them. All right, let's have a look at worksheet number 10 now. Uh, number one says, draw the magnetic field surrounding the wire showing electron current below. Okay, electron current means that it's going to be negative charges. Which way are they going? It's an X. Which way are they going? Away. Away from us or into the page. We know it's a series of concentric circles, but we'll just draw one circle again just because it's space. Okay, um, if, even if we drew more than one, the field would all be pointing in the same direction for all of them here. So what are we going to do? Okay, take our fingers and our thumb and make sure they're at 90 degrees to each other. Put your thumb in the direction of the moving charge, which is away from us right here. Bend your fingers a little bit. doesn't matter how much. doesn't matter how much we bend them. The magnetic field is going to go counterclockwise. Does that make sense? Everybody get counterclockwise? Okay, let's take a look at the second one. Draw the magnetic field surrounding the wire showing the electron current below. Again, electron current. Might be a good idea, actually, when you see a question like this to draw attention to the fact of whether it's a negative or positive particle. So remember it's a left hand or right hand rule. The mistake tends to be made more if it's a positive particle. We get in the habit of doing left hand rule. If it's a positive particle, sometimes we forget to do the right hand rule. Uh, this means it's coming out of the page. So circle, thumb out of the page, fingers bent a little bit here. It means it's going to go clockwise. Uh, electron current going to the right. What do we got here? Where are my fingers right now? Where are my fingers? Not which way are they pointing. Where are they? Above. Above. And they're pointing which way? Into the page. Where are my fingers right now? Behind the wire. Again, you're looking at your fingertips, right? What we should do is have a little activity tomorrow where we take some nail polish and paint little arrows on the end of my fingernails. Okay. Um, if you promise me you'll remember that you use your fingertips, I won't make you do that, okay? Fingertips, not the rest of your fingers. My fingertips are behind the wire and they're pointing which way? Down. down. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing downward, and that broken arrow means represents behind the wire. Okay, where are my finger where are my fingertips right now? Below the wire and they're pointing which way? Towards us or out of the page. And where are my fingertips right now? Remember, the tips of my fingers, not, the, not this part, but the tips of my fingers right here, pointing up or toward the top of the page. Got it? How many people got that? Whether you represented it like that or you drew circles around it or used words, doesn't really matter as long as you got the same thing. All right, number four, uh, magnetic field surrounding the moving alpha particle. I'm going to really draw attention to this. I'm going to write in an RH to remind me that it's a right-hand rule here. Uh, thumb, right thumb up, fingers, which, where are my fingers right now? To the, to the left. And which way are they pointing? Out of the page. Remember that dart coming towards you? Okay, my fingertips right now are to the right, and they're pointing into the page. My fingertips right now are behind the wire, or behind the moving alpha particle, and they're pointing which way? To the left, and right now they're in front of the moving charge, and they're pointing to the right. to the right. How many people got that one? Anybody get opposite to that for everything? Okay, that's a really common mistake, actually. Maybe not yet, because you're so conscious of this. But as you get doing more and more of these, and you become better and better at it, we we tend to overlook those little things, right? Right hand rule because it's an alpha particle, not left hand rule. Okay, five and six are a little bit different. Uh, five says the diagram below shows the magnetic field surrounding a moving electron. Is it uh, into the page, out of the page? This is kind of like algebra with a hand rule, rearranging. Usually we say thumb, which way do my fingers point? This time we're going to say fingers, which way does my thumb point? So my left, because it's an, uh, an electron, my left fingers got to go clockwise, which way does my thumb automatically point? If I keep it at 90 degrees, my thumb will automatically point out of the page. Alpha particle, right hand. Fingers going clockwise, 
thumb is automatically pointing into the page. Is that okay?